Welcome to the next episode of The Existential Files with Dr. Louis Sava and Dr. Matthew Smith. Hooray! Ah, ah, hello. Hooray! ah, hello there. Are we doing silly voices now? Oh, yes, we're going to do a funny voices. Ah. I don't know who that person was there. Ah. We're going to we're gonna now offend all of our so-called ah. Irish people because these are supposed to be Irish accents, you know. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Good morrow, dear sir. Uh, top of the morning, because I think all Irish people say that, don't they? I think I, you find they I all believe, do. I believe they do, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, now I've offended, uh, well, maybe one of one listener. We haven't got any listeners anyway yet. But thank you for anybody who is listening. Um, so hello, Louis. Good to make contact with you. We're going to have this chat ahead of a couple of other recordings we're going to do today with what we might call real guests. I was wanting to speak to you about something that's been going through my mind recently, um, which is about a project which I started on, or I started on with, um, I was gonna say, my good lady wife, but it was before before we were married. Um, so we'll refer to her as Rachel, for that is her name, who you know very well. Um, the project is something called Million Dollar Psychic. Mm-hmm. So we're back into this realms of so-called paranormal and psychics and mediums and so on. So you and I have spoken about our uh, broad interest in, in the paranormal and parapsychology. For both of us, we've somewhat left that behind and moved on to other things. And for me, this particular project almost was going to mark the end of that, where one of the reasons why I became less enamored or whatever with parapsychology is experimental type work wasn't really producing anything of that interest. I wasn't sure if I've ever found it that compelling when someone said, oh, the probability of this happening by chance is P is less than 0.001 or whatever, which by the way, is actually quite rare in parapsychology. Yeah, usually... that, that <laughs> yeah. It's usually hovering about 0.0, that magical yeah. 0.05 and, or, yeah. or even 0.06. You go, yeah. oh, 0.06, yeah. that's near enough. That'll count. So, and in fact, the work we, you and I were working on, we mentioned before, was this kind of ESP project, blah, 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 blah. I may say more about, say more about that another time. But my feeling was that maybe something we find really compelling was, oh, if I could have experiences myself, I'd never really had any experiences that I'd go, oh, that's really hard to explain. Because a lot of so-called parapsychologists would may, may say, well, the reason I'm interested in this stuff is I'm trying to explain experiences even I've had, as well as experiences that people they know very well have had. So I was moving more to this idea of what does it mean to have a so-called, I keep saying so-called this morning, psychic experience, Um, and can one develop this oneself? So the kind of idea for this project, which initially was kind of a a book type project, uh, which was, uh, the the heading was Million Dollar Psychic, can a skeptic become a psychic and win a million dollars? Because at the time, the Million Dollar Psychic Challenge, which is uh, offered by the Randy Foundation, um, and that's not Randy as in R-A-N-D-Y, it's Randy as in James Randy, who again, you know very well, um, who has offered this large sum of money for anybody who can demonstrate genuine paranormal psychic abilities. And the money, as far as I know, is still there, because at the time, when we had this project idea, is it was going to be withdrawn. By a year later, after having this idea, I thought it's going to be it's about a year left on it, because they couldn't really afford to keep going with it. So I thought, great, you've got a year to kind of go for this, this challenge to see if it's possible to win it. So that was the idea. It had a bit of a nice, interesting hook to it. I started to write it in terms of a book idea. Then, you know, because Rachel works in TV and because I was, you know, had interest in that area, people said, oh, that could make work a nice, a nice little film or a nice little TV project or something. Thought, oh, absolutely, yeah, great. So it kind of held off, held off, held off, and then it never really happened. The only thing we really did of any worth, there's a few little things, but we produced what's called a taster, so again, in television circles, often if you're trying to get a channel or a broadcaster or whatever commissioner interested, you produce a little short taster. So if anyone went to look now, it's still on YouTube. There's a short version, like a one minute version, like the kind of the opening credits almost. And then a 15 minute version where it kind of sets the scene and just talks through you know, what the idea of it would be. And it's left with a to be continued as though we're about to continue with it. Now, that was done now about seven years ago. So with one thing or another, other things happened, and we didn't really continue it. I, at the time, had left an academic job in part to pursue this project. That was the idea. Oh, this is so important to me. I've got to go and do this and see if I can develop psychic powers um, and win a million dollars kind of thing. Um, and that was the idea. So it kind of, yeah, as you know, and real life took over. 
uh, picked up other work and I now find myself back being an academic again. Uh, and as we said, looking at the ideas of positive psychology. But this idea of this so-called million dollar psychic challenge, whether or not one can develop these kinds of abilities oneself, still appeals to me. But as I'm saying this and knowing that I'm speaking to you, Louis, you're going to go, well, I'm going to maybe preempt or put words in your mouth, which is, yeah, by all means, yeah, do what you want, Matt, because, you know, you know you're an existential being free to choose what you want to do. But why bother wasting your time on trying to do something which is clearly not possible because psychic powers don't exist? I mean, I, I remember when I, I I had people talking to me about it at the time, and I thought you basically had a breakdown, really. <laughs> I, 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 I assumed that you'd had a mental breakdown, and I didn't really know how to deal with that, so I kind Maybe of just, I, have, I, just, <laughs> I just left you to it. because Absolutely. I, I, In your I, caring, caring yeah. way, you thought, I'd leave him to it. Cause, cause, but, well, because the, the Matt that I had known was always seemed quite um, sceptical and, and rational. Absolutely. Like for you to throw yourself into some kind of... And I, I didn't realise it was a, I'm going to see if I can, rather than I am. Um, so so I guess I was maybe unfair to you. Um, but, I mean, I think the basic premise... I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I think you have to go into this... You, you would have to go into it open-minded. I think if you were just going to go, I don't believe, I'm not going to find anything... I, I think that would be disingenuous. I think you would be you would be disingenuous to a lot of people maybe trying to help you. And I think mm -hmm. you, and I don't and I don't think that you would achieve anything because what what would you be saying? You'd be saying to the skeptics, "Hey, look, I told you there wasn't anything." And they and the skeptic would say, "Yes, well, what do you expect?" And then the the, the believers would say, "Well, you were never going to get anything because you didn't give it a chance." So again, uh, you know, that would be a waste of time. I kind of I was watching the video quite recently thinking it's it's not is you know as an exercise i like it um of course you know i don't believe in the paranormal i don't believe that you could get any special insight into the world but i think you it would definitely be an interesting you know go and sit on a hilltop with some kind of um you know a, a, a doctor strange doctor marvel whatever his name is kind of experience of going to tibet and learning these magical powers i mean i certainly think it would be an interesting um an interesting read. It, it, an interesting read or an interesting documentary or whatever. I thought I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Good. Well, interesting is good. That's always a good start with you, Louis. And there is, I mean, at the time I kind of justified it by thinking, well, because obviously at the time and still, there's a sense of uh, a presumption in that as a in quotes skeptic uh, or being skeptical of these, of these ideas that well, I, I suspect it's not possible. So, so it's a bit of a kind of why, why do it if it's not possible, well, partly is to explore this idea there is a whole lot of literature out there focused on things like develop your psychic powers. Here's the things you can do. You know, we've all, we were all psychic to some extent. All you need to do is to tune into it and spend some time nurturing it, opening yourself up to it, that kind of stuff. And, and there is stuff out there. There's people offer courses. It was, not, it was an opportunity to explore that world, which, again, as a science, again, use these terms, in quotes, a scientific parapsychologist, which someone might say is an oxymoron, but as someone taking that scientific approach to kind of go this idea of let's explore it at a personal level, it's like, well, normally you'd leave that completely to one side and say, no, no, that, that's not for me. I want to be quite disinterested and be this kind of you know, researcher. Whereas I was genuinely interested in, I would love to have an experience that I go, whoa, that's unusual. That's genuinely anomalous or perhaps paranormal. It could be explained in these ways. So it may not be paranormal, it may be something else, but at least I've got something to work with that's meaningful to me, rather than either listening to other people's experiences, which we can always explain away, or looking at p-values and that kind of stuff. Because if I'm if I'm right, I think we've had discussions off air. But if I'm right in saying that you've never had any kind of paranormal or pseudo paranormal experience. <sighs> I mean, if I say, I mean, for example, I mean, I, I remember when I was about 17, I saw a UFO. Um, I was sitting um, in my room and over this, I was sit, I lived in Streatham at the time. And Streatham does have a, a UFO experience with, you know, in the literature. And, and I was looking out over the hills, over the, over the, the, the hills, over the, uh, the, 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 the tops of the houses. And there in the sky was a silver dish. Um, and I basically shit my pants I was like, oh, my God, they're fucking landing. And then the next second it turned and it was a seagull. But for that one second, I was absolutely certain that the aliens were going to come and land. And I think in some ways, it, you know, that's one little experience. It's, you know, 
Fun, funnily enough, in that same house, I did see another UFO. I remember my, my flatmate knocked on the door, Louis, Louis, they're landing. I was like, oh, don't be silly like this. And, and, and I looked out the window, and there out the window was a huge UFO with flashing lights going around it, basically down the back of the house. And I, and I again, I was shitting myself, thinking, oh my God, they're landing. What was it this time? Not a seagull, because there were definitely flashing right lights going around it. It was definitely a UFO of thoughts. Any ideas, Matt? Uh, no. Uh, Richard, Richard Branson had a UFO balloon. Brilliant. That he would fly Absolutely around and fucking brilliant. scare people with. So thank, <laughs> thank you, Richard. You so shit the me tent, up. It, and, the uh, tent was genuinely to kind of, or was he testing out a new form of no, it, balloon aviation technology? <laughs> it was a balloon shaped like a UFO with, with Ooh, lights on it. it. So there you go. So there I mean, you go. Other, and I use those I like examples that. to say that from those examples, I could see how people could experience something, believe it as being real. But it not necessarily be what they think it is. You see what I mean? Yes. So, so I asked you, that's why I said, have you had a pseudo experience? Though? So um, I, my gut reaction is saying no, as in that's maybe a skeptic. No, 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 I've had nothing. And then people say, well, hold on a minute, what about these things you experience? Well, the only, so, so again, given we've talked before about Most Haunted, I have no memory or experience on that kind of show. Like, oh, I've seen things or heard things that I genuinely didn't feel could be normally explained. So no, nothing like that nature. Um, the nearest would be things like, we've talked about these ideas before, I'm not sure if it's on air or off air, but coincidence and coincidences. Right. So, and again, that's why I'm interested in, there are things where coincidence, because in some ways, some of the stuff to do with, because you just talked talk about the UFO stuff, which has never really appealed to me. Yeah, no. Um, because, in, you know, never appealed to me about that. Uh, it's more to do with things like um, the so-called abilities of the mind, is it possible to be able to pick up information from somebody else through things like extrasensory perception or dream about the future? Or one that really always, you know, really impressed me, this idea of psychokinesis, by simply thinking a certain thing, can you bend matter towards what you want it to be and so on? These are all ideas that if they were genuine, in quotes, superpowers, those are things that really interested me. So, and if you think about it, coincidence plays a heart you know, is at the heart of those, particularly ESP stuff. If you're saying, I'm thinking of something and, and I tell you what you're thinking of something and they happen to be the same or close enough or something, you're dealing with what is effectively a coincidence. One person's thinking of something, somebody else appears to be thinking of the same thing, that's a coincidence. Now, one possible interpretation of that is, oh, that was communicated from person one to person two or person one influenced it into person two. There's something that's kind of communication and that essentially, I would say, is what a lot of that type of parapsychology is about is recognizing or exploring those experiences and seeing if in a, a lab type environment under control conditions can that can that be shown to, where we rule out other possible explanations and if you go to the million dollar challenge type thing whilst that hasn't been set up to look at those kinds of perhaps even everyday experiences or the kind of work that the parapsychologists are doing it was set up to as, as, a, as a very strong piece of rhetoric to say that, well, okay, there's people out there, um, you know, the big name psychics and mediums around the world who are making lots of money, making very strong claims based upon these ideas, that they have these abilities. If they really can do what they say they can do, here's a million dollars for somebody who can prove it, demonstrate it under reasonable conditions, they're doing it for real. That money is still sat there, so which is very strong rhetoric to say, you know, wouldn't you think they'd be able to claim that money if it's for real? Ergo, they must be fake, they must be phony. And I think it's very, very strong skeptical rhetoric that, again, in the context of the project, is exploring those two kind of camps, those two different worlds that are exploring the same kind of ideas. But on one side, the people who are the skeptics saying, well, this stuff isn't really real. We can look at the psychology of it. We can understand why people believe this stuff, but it isn't really real. There's the parapsychologist people saying, oh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. We can maybe do some research to explore that. And then there's the others who are making often a very good living out of saying, this stuff is real, I can do it, you can do it too, buy my books, come on my courses and let's look at it. <laughs> and I was gonna do a project where I could really explore those areas firsthand with a potential possibility of, if there is something to it, you know, with my so-called scientific background, maybe we could develop better ways of testing and exploring this stuff, better than we've got in the past. So there was kind of some rationale to it Again, it was sort of left to one side, and it's just, it's never really gone away. It's gone very much on a back burner, and I was just starting to toy with this idea of maybe it's time to revisit it, 
see if there's something out there that's worth coming back to. But if I did, it'd be a much more sort of lower level kind of a sort of film stuff. You know, nowadays, film stuff on a phone, do short interviews, do podcasts, whatever, and get it out there rather than we, we started writing little bits, producing that taster, which is very nicely done given it was on basically zero budget. Rachel produced it and had a director who then did this and cameramen and editors and so on all you know, looked pretty good for a kind of no budget um, a little little clip. But this idea, I think what we'd be more keen to do is just because just do stuff, just go out there and you know, see if you can find people who claim to be able to de- teach this stuff, demonstrate it. You know, would they themselves be interested in going for this kind of um, prize? Because that's what interests me. The people who claim to be able to do this, why do they not go for that challenge? Because they often don't. There's nobody really going for it. The people who often do go for it are the anybody out there who claims to have some ability. And I think the problems they were facing with it in terms of the Randy Foundation for many years was that, well, we, it wasn't really set up to try to test sort of everyday claimants. It was to try and take it to those big name claimants and say, well, why don't you go for this challenge if you can really do what you say you can do? So there you go. Well, I'm, I'm mindful of the time, Matt, so I think Indeed. maybe we'll uh, draw it to So I want a, to put that back out to you there, and maybe our listener could sort of give an opinion, you know. But I think, okay, interesting. I, 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 again, at the very least, I think it'll be interesting. Uh, maybe watch this space. I may talk to you more about it if, if the opportunity arises. Uh, but on that note, thanks for listening. Bye-bye. And let's, and let's go back to some silly voices again. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, bye-bye.